Hello again. Another in the series on the um, history and development and collecting of knives. And today we're going to uh, talk about an yet, yet another book which uh, is devoted to the Fairbairn knife and its variants. Uh, such an iconic knife has obviously several books written about it and uh, or major sections of other books written about it and the, the one today is this book the earliest commando knives by dr william windrum and it's got a really great uh, poster on the back uh, from canadian victory bonds the book uh starts with uh a section about a knife that was issued to the Commando Training Centre uh, before the Fairbairn was produced. And this was uh, from Wilkinson and it was the RBD knife. And um, since this book was written, I think uh, there's been more information on earth about it. But basically it was um, a knife designed uh, for hunting uh, out in the British Empire. Uh, it was de it was designed to a specific um, requirement by the user, and uh, because Wilkinson had it uh, in stock uh, or in the in the catalogue, um, when the commandos needed some training knives, um, supplies of the RBD were sent up, and it basically it looked a bit like a Bowie. So it, it, the book starts with that. Then it goes into um, a lot of detail on the first pattern, the uh, the original Fairbairn knife, and uh, a lot of detail about that. Uh, the book is uh, fairly slim, and uh, the photo reproduction is small. So compared to some of the other books, for example, um, Robert Berlain's book, um the detail and the quality of photo reproduction is is not comparable but he, he certainly uh he's been collecting knives military knives for a long time and he he goes into great detail on on them then we come to um a couple of problems He's talking about some of the uh, Fairbairn knives and he refers to knives made by John Paisley, a Scottish um, knife maker, Smith, Scottish Smith. And uh, unfortunately, um, research uh, has, has established that this guy did not exist. And uh, this is something we will refer to in uh, when we review another book, but... Uh, it, it's opposite here because uh, it's in um, Dr. Windham's book. The guy didn't exist. So there are knives marked with his uh, supposed mark, which then uh, are fake. So there's one particular knife called a suicide knife, which the hilt unscrewed and you can put a suicide tablet in it. And because it comes from this... Um, phantom maker then we've got to say that the whole idea of, of um, the suicide knife may be in question and it's been referred to in, in some um, quite um, well-respected books uh, as if it's fact the pro problem is there's a lot of faking in the knife world uh, I've mentioned Terry Hagland before, and he, he, he used to deal knives. He used to go to all the military shows, and he operated at a shop at one time. And um, he would quite happily sell you a fake. Uh, it, it was part of the game, and uh, it's how he made his money. But he also knew what was um, what was right. Uh, he, he could look at a knife, and he knew if it was right or if it was a fake. Um, it was a skill. You know that we had a TV series, Lovejoy, here about antique dealers, and the idea was somebody knew when something what was was uh, right or not, and and Terry was a bit like that with knives, and uh, it, it was him who first told me about this mass of fakes that 
came, um, particularly in um, the World War II, and particularly in the more uh, specialised SOE slash OSS uh, weapons, that they were made after World War II. And uh, it can be tested, the metallurgy can be tested because the radioactive levels after, after 1945, when we started atmospheric nuclear blasts, um, all, all, all knives made since then uh, have a level of radi radiation. And knives previous to 1945 don't. So I was able to test them. And a lot of them were fakes. Anyway, it's a bit of a digression. He then, uh, also another maker, he, he references Alcock and Pierce from Australia, another non-existent maker. So anything that came from them uh, is highly suspect. He then goes into the Shanghai knife, uh, and in fact, it's the Shanghai knife which is on the cover. Now, the Shanghai knife uh, did exist. Um, we already referred to um, Professor Yeaton's book, um, so we have the provenance on that. However, again, there's a lot of fakes, and to the point that most of the Shanghai knives that are in circulation are fakes. Um, and some of them are very, very, very good. Now, I have my own Shanghai knife here, which I'm quite happy to tell you is a reproduction. It was made by Dan Brock in America, made it for me, did a very, very good job. Um, very, it's a very well-made knife, and it's also a very good knife. Uh, it's handy. Um, it's um, similar hilt shape to what became the Fairbairn Sykes, uh, and it's a little piece of history. But this one is reproduction, and uh, many of the ones that are claimed to be originals are also reproduction. And I will say also that the sheath that um, Dan supplies with his knives is very good quality leather. So if you're interested in, in a Shanghai knife, Dan Brock at Plowshare Forge is um, the guy to, to uh, approach. There's a picture in, in, the, in the book which alleges to be actually... This one here is supposed to be Fairbairn's own um, Shanghai knife. And uh, probably 99% sure that it's not, that it's a fake. Then um, Dr. Windrum makes a statement when he talks about the development of the, uh, the Fairbairn Sykes that when they had the meeting at Wilkinson, that uh, Fairbairn brought along his Shanghai knife um, to show them. Now, this assertion is not backed up by any evidence that I, I, I can uh, find anywhere else. Um, in fact, the evidence tends to suggest that uh, he didn't. He, he, he relied on sketches. There's also an account... Um, that when Fairbairn and Sykes were asked to produce a knife, um, they, they were in London and they actually went to the Tower of London to kind of get some inspiration from the types of knives that were there. But the collection was um, had, had been um, put into storage for the duration of the war. So they didn't get, have any luck there. So they, they turned up at uh, the Wilkinson offices and um, just use sketches and uh, just verbal descriptions and so on. There's no, no corroboration that they actually had a, a, a Shanghai knife with them. And in fact, if we go back to a book I reviewed previously, the terrific, the first commando knives by uh, Professor uh, Kelly Yeaton, uh, I, I, I mentioned in the review that he, he has... Um, uh, letters between um, Applegate and Sykes, which are a treasure. But there's also a letter in here between uh, K. 
Kelly and uh, Fairburn. Uh, he contacted Fairburn via his publishers, and Fairburn was actually in the United States at the time. He was in New York, and it's a handwritten letter, Fairburn's own, own hand, um, from a hotel in New York. And he, um, there's a lot in it. I'm not going to uh, read it be because by the book, but um, one of the things he, he does, he makes it very, very clear that he was very fond of Sam Yeaton. He asked about him. Sam was in the Marines. He actually became a Marine Raider. Um, he, he also talks about the matchbox blow, which is something which has attracted a little bit of uh, controversy. Fairbairn explains it in detail in this. But he also says that um, when he went along uh, to, to Wilkinson, he wishes... He had his old, old staff with him um, because it was hard to get the knife made. He doesn't say he had the Shanghai knife with him. He just says he wishes he had his old staff who from the armory who, who made knives. And there was haggling about the price. The Wilkinson um, thought it was difficult to produce the knife they wanted at the price they wanted and so on. Um, so there was a thing there. But then uh, it, it's being established that one of the things they did was grab a ruler off a desk and uh, show some knife fighting uh, techniques um, to the, to the uh, rather astonished Wilkinson people. Well, had they had the Shanghai knife with them, one of the things that you do with a knife like this is you leave it in the sheath and you can, you can be, be doing the techniques quite safely in the sheath. So it's another reason why I don't think they had the Shanghai knife with them. Um, but that aside, um, it's a nice book. Uh, and uh, it's, it's certainly, uh, I, I, I found it worth the money. Uh, uh, I always like reading about the Shanghai knife, but you do have to be skeptical uh, about, about some of the um, the examples that are out there but all in all it, it's it's a book i did enjoy